Hello lovelies, I've been threatening to do a black dog diary for about a week, so I guess here it is. I had some nice messages from people over the weekend that they appreciate um, what I do, that I am open about mental health issues and all the rest of it, and that they got something out of it, so that kind of steeled my resolve to do one. I am not particularly well at the moment. I'm very down. Everything seems kind of pointless. Um, don't panic. I don't want to kill myself. I just want to die. <laughs> there is a difference. There is a difference between those two things, believe it or not. I'm not about to hurt myself or do anything. I think I'm on the way out now. I hope I'm on the way out again now. But I am not very well at all. Now, depression doesn't need a reason to hit. This is the the one main message about depression and other mental health issues that I think really needs to be hammered home to people. You don't have to be depressed about something. You can just be depressed for no reason. Your mood can tank for, for no readily apparent emotional or, or situational reason. But what it can do is catastrophize and worsen the normal sort of slings and arrows of day-to-day -day life that we all suffer and I can point to a few things in this instance that haven't particularly helped my brain of late unfortunately I started out this year pretty kind of resolved it's not wise to make all kinds of changes and New Year's resolutions and all the rest of it and I typically don't don't do that I, I make some kind of small change or rededicate myself to things that I've let slide towards the end of the year so the only real change I made was to reprioritize things ironically to try and take care of myself a bit better and to stave off the depression a bit better what, what people call self-care I guess so I've reprioritized my exercise I've tried to reassert control over diet and things so I can live more healthily and lose a bit more weight as I put back on about eight pounds over the Christmas period and I've only just really started to, to reduce that six pounds to go to get back to where I was at the end of last year and so I, I started out resolved but and, and without making any hugely dramatic changes but uh, that resolve just seems to have vanished earlier than than it was supposed to and the main thing is just that reprioritization for self-care but self-care feels extremely selfish um, it can sound self-aggrandizing but I've always tended to put other people first for the most part make sure they're okay look after them prioritize their health their security all of that at the expense often of my own because I I guess um, it's kind of pathological really but if I'm taking care of other people I don't have to worry about myself so much to the point that virtually any kind of self-care or self-promotion or anything like that just feels utterly selfish so I made that change but I feel incredibly guilty about it taking time out to take care of myself look after myself time when I could be working spent exercising or spending extra time making a meal or whatever it is it just all feels horribly self-indulgent to me it's a real struggle um, and because of that reprioritization I'm not able to put out as much work as I would like to I'm not able to dedicate as much time to refining and perfecting things as I would like to um, and I often don't feel like I have the energy to do anything productive if I expend that energy doing the things to take care of myself, like the exercise, for example. So it, it, that's a constant struggle, um, finding a way to take care of myself without it feeling selfish and indulgent and letting everything else down. The, uh, well, 
The beginning of the end of the Brexit affair hasn't been particularly good for me either. I am married to an immigrant, albeit not an EU one. I have lots of friends in the EU, from the EU, married to people from the EU, and it's just the unleashing of stupidity and little Englanderism is incredibly depressing to watch. I, I still had some sort of vague idea of, of the British being yeah, fairly sort of safe and stayed and passed these kind of petty things that we were suspicious enough of people in power that we would discount attempts to make us hate people but uh, here we are and the Tory government has a huge majority on the basis of a minuscule rise in vote share and can basically do whatever the fuck they want and they don't care about propriety or tradition or the way things have been done unless it's in law and even there they want to disempower the few checks and balances that we have in Britain so it's a it's a pretty dark time to be British it's a pretty dark time to be American too it's it's not a good time and the failings of the opposition parties to work together to make electoral pacts to make any kind of sense whatsoever in a lot of cases certainly in the case of Labour that's also been quite devastating you need a healthy opposition and I've talked uh, today even in uh, my live stream video about how I now feel very insecure about my future I work as much as I can as hard as I can less now because I'm taking the time to take care of myself but you know I, I do what I can I am so riddled with social anxiety and depression that I don't think I could hold down a normal job so I work for myself and I work as hard as I can and you actively get penalized for that uh, often if you're if you're receiving benefits you have a good you have a good week your benefit could be stopped you can then have to reapply things like that fortunately that hasn't been the case for me so far but I look at the rollout of universal credit and how it would affect me bearing in mind I struggled on manfully for 10 years without getting any assistance yeah I look at that and that's that feeling of insecurity is not pleasant and I am in a situation far better than a lot of people who are really precarious when it comes to money so my fears for myself feel selfish but I look at what's happening to other people people I know people I care about and that's also depressing and becomes more depressing because of the depression the side effects of either the depression or the medication I, I, I would definitely say keep taking the pills but I think anyone who's been on depression medication for for a long time starts to wonder you know what what's me what's the drugs what's the depression because it has effects on you and depression itself has wide-ranging effects beyond feeling a little bit sad you can have flu-like symptoms can affect your concentration can make you want to sleep all the time but then not be able to sleep at night things like that one thing that's particularly harrowing for me is I was always a voracious reader and as part of my sort of resolutions I guess I determined that I would read more you know just a chapter at least of a book per day right it, it's not it's not that much but I'm finding it a real struggle to concentrate in a way that I don't find when I'm writing but when I'm trying to read, my eye just skims over the page and doesn't take anything in. Um, I've started having to use a, a bookmark line by line, like a, like a child or a slow learner <laughs> to read. That's devastating. I used to just kind of inhale knowledge and fiction and it was easy and it would stick. And now it's, it's a chore that I have to force myself to do. Is it the depression? Is it the drugs? I, I don't know, but it's, it's difficult. It's never been difficult before, and it's not getting easier the more I read. So that's, that's almost a, like part of my identi identity has been shaven off in a way. 
there's YouTube. The channel does not get anything like the traction that I would like it to. I'm not chasing the algorithm or chasing subscribers or whatever, but I would I would have hoped that my more calm, more measured approach to most things and you know, the effort I put in would count for something. I mean I don't I don't do it for money, I don't do it for any of that stuff really I just do it for me as a kind of therapy I guess living out in the country by my, by myself you know I'm a, I'm alone for long periods and it gives me an opportunity to talk about things that, that bother me or interest me or to spill the beans like this because I know it will help people you know but it's such a struggle and every time it starts to feel like I'm getting some kind of traction YouTube pulls the rug out from under me And it takes up most of my morning every every day to do the videos, which is time that could be spent on something else. But I keep going because I feel that mentally it helps me. But at the same time, it's horribly frustrating. That you don't get the traction or the engagement or or the views most of the time. Occasionally, something will go semi-viral into the, into the thousands or tens of thousands, but it's quite rare. When it comes to work, I just don't feel like I'm doing enough output. And with the same with the reading, my attention flits from one thing to another too quickly, and I have to force myself to concentrate on one project at a time, or nothing would get done. And it's gotten a lot harder to sell material, to get publicity, to advertise myself because I'm no good at it <laughs> and because it feels selfish uh, it makes me incredibly self-conscious and anxious to do so and there's other things that influence that as well I've been doing giveaways this is the second month I'll be sending that one off in a day or two and even giving away free stuff books and dice and materials and things of mine I can't get any traction even when I'm just giving something away yeah, it's disheartening to say the least especially when you put that across the next to the success of undeserving people nasty horrible <laughs> pricks quite honestly uh, people who are quite blatantly grifting or get their publicity off the back of attacking someone else you know, when you're doing your best to be principled and fair and to put out things of quality to have someone else succeed massively just by being a, a massive prick on YouTube or um, a shameless self-promoter when it comes to games uh, playing games with the, the the social conflict that we're all embroiled in it's uh, even more frustrating you know, I've got this weird reputation that is completely at odds with how I self-identify and people will just listen to what they've been told by the right people, the right thought leaders, rather than talking to you themselves or trying to understand your point of view. I think I do understand other people's points of view, left or right, libertarian, authoritarian. I think I understand where they're coming from. I just disagree with them. And this, this commitment to fairness and to principle over and above expediency and politics and image is probably what fucks me over but I think about this a lot and there's no way I could be anyone other than myself I don't see a way clear where I could stop being fair where I could stop being principled where I could stop giving people benefit of the doubt and yet this stands against me and I have this mob that hates me for things I don't believe or haven't done and it's tremendously affecting to be regarded in that way. You can only brush it off and laugh at it so much unless you're playing off it. And I don't really have any intention to play off it. 
The way the mob went after Satine to make her stop being my friend was far more affecting than I thought it was. Yeah, someone I've worked with, someone whose ascent in geekdom I'm, I'm incredibly, incredibly proud of everything she's accomplished. I think she's a wonderful person. But that belief in her has been undermined by what has happened. At the same time, you can't really blame someone for buckling under the stress. But it's, it's that that incident is a constant niggle because I'm extremely loyal to people. I stand up for people, or I stand up for fairness of principle all the time. And you can't but help some sort of can't help but expect some sort of reciprocity there. And that hasn't been the case, and not not just with Satine, with lots of other people. You know, it's not anything I've done, but the accusations and so on towards me are so outlandish and horrible, and there's such a nasty vocal mob behind it that you get thrown under the bus so that people can preserve their own reputation and their own work and so on. The end of last year and kind of into, into this one, I was working very hard <laughs> on behalf of and with Rachel Haywire. Um, industrial musician, artist, writer, you know, she really lit a fire under my ass <laughs> to get me to do things, to put the election party game together, to write articles and short stories for trigger warning. That's kind of all come to an end because Rachel's been, I think, I don't want to put words in the mouth, but I think beaten down by culture war things that have happened to her, attacks on her, a feeling that she can't get any traction, a lot of these same things that are depressing me and making it hard for me to accomplish anything. And when someone you're, you're close to whose who's raw enthusiasm, much like Satine's, has really kind of helped you and energized you and made you do things and work harder than you have in years, you know, when that person then falters or falls at a, at a hurdle and is, is defeated by this shit show that can't help but knock back on to me and with Rachel giving up kind of but not really it feels like there's a weight on me to continue some of these things to launch narrative attack which we did one episode of well, two episodes of as a, as a podcast and a website and keep that writing going because I really felt a sense of artistic achievement and enthusiasm that I hadn't felt for a very long time when I was working with Rachel first on her Humanist Party presidential nomination campaign and then on the game and the trigger warning site and so on but you know she's far more bold about promoting herself than I than I ever would be and still couldn't get any traction and faltered and that's had a big depressing effect on me. I feel spread thin. If I took on something like the trigger warning site or turned it into narrative attack or whatever, I might get some artistic fulfillment, but would I have the time to run it properly, to commission articles? Would I have the money? Would I be able to monetize it? Would I be able to attract the traffic? It's, it, it's too much. I can't take on all of this stuff. So I don't know what to do. I don't want that kind of website to disappear. I don't want to stop writing those kind of articles, but then where are they going to go? Where are those kinds of short stories going to go? One of the hardest things about depression, and the thing I'm really struggling with at the moment, is called anhedonia. That's when you feel no sense of pleasure or accomplishment of anything, from anything. One of the things I did want to do this year was to start doing regular online gaming sessions, but the anxiety and the lack of pleasure that I get from doing things has made that pretty much impossible. If I say I want to run a game and nobody wants to play in it, you know, that's a huge blow to my ego. One of the few things that I'm confident that I can do and do well is to run a, a role-playing game, on, online or off. But I get no sense of satisfaction, no sense of accomplishment, no sense of pleasure from doing so. It's, it's all become kind of mechanical. And similarly, I've done 
good deeds, I suppose. You, you don't do them for kudos, right? I'm not Monty Burns. You do these things because you want to help people. But at the same time, I think we can all admit that you do get something out of it. People say nice things about you, or you get a sense of accomplishment or pleasure from accomplishing whatever it is. Yeah, I raised enough money to get a, a old friend of mine a wheelchair. That should be a, a big accomplishment that I feel something for, right? And I helped another disabled person get, get a game out after they'd been fucked over by, by the gaming industry and previous work partners. I should feel happy about that. I should feel accomplished. I, I feel nothing. When I run a, a game for people, even if they say, oh, that was amazing and we enjoyed it, I don't feel it. I'm not satisfied with my own work. I get, I extract no joy from it, even even my pastime, which is also my career. I, 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 get, I just get nothing from it. And I, I got no confidence in it, in part because I'm incapable of sensing that I've done something or, or accomplished something. Yeah, you, I'd start to wonder if this is midlife crisis, really. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things I would have liked to accomplish, have accomplished by now that I haven't, largely because of the illness. I would have liked to have started a family, but I don't think it's fair to bring a child into a, into a situation where you're semi-frequently suicidal, depressed, listless, could I, would I have the, the energy to look after a child? I, I don't know. And that's made me incredibly sensitive to other people and their children. It just upsets me to, to be around them quite often. So while my brother has started a family and has, had, has two young kids, I can't bear to be around them for too long, which is a horrible situation to be in. Yeah, I would have years ago I would have loved to have been the cool uncle you know some of my friends were having kids who are teenagers now and that's scary and you look at them and I would have liked to have been in their lives and been cool uncle grim or, or whatever there's friends of mine who had kids who at one time I read stories to who are getting on for getting on for their 20s which is scary but moving away from everybody, being kind of cut off and isolated in the country along with everything else meant I never got that opportunity and now it's become this whole thing. I feel really kind of trapped and hemmed in by life with so many narrowed options, no way out. And that trapped feeling is what tends to lead me down the suicidal route. But I'm not there, don't panic. I think, just to kind of cap this all off, is I've really exhausted the help that is available. I've been to charitable organisations, I've had a private therapist for a while that helped but then stopped helping, and there's a cost associated with it that is more stress, and eventually that stress becomes more than the therapy is worth. I've been referred to the community mental health team twice, first time useless. I stuck it out for three months so I could see a psychologist. Wasn't a great deal of help, just recommended some more pills, different cocktail, I guess. Short of being committed, there is really no more help out there for me other than kind of emergency care. And so far I've managed to avoid being committed, and I narrowly in one case, but I would very much like not to be sectioned. This isn't as bad as previous bouts have been, but it's it's dragging on and it just sucks the life out of everything and it makes everything a huge, huge effort. I know people get something out of me talking about this. I know it's depressing <laughs> to talk about depression, but here we are. I have a kind of comedy skit about the whole thing I've written, which I should put out at some point, but... I do know that other people draw strength and help from hearing me talk about this and being open about it in a way that a lot of men feel that they can't be. So I feel that it is worth it to do this. But yeah, I'm still having a having a rough old time. I don't do this for sympathy or for kudos. 
despite what I said earlier. I just do it because I know it helps people. And I guess I'm hoping that I get some sense of satisfaction or pleasure out of accomplishing this. But it doesn't really feel like it. Hopefully I'm on the mend. Zang.